with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today, I'm hanging out with Kevin. Kevin has a really cool step van that he converted to an awesome living space. Today, he's gonna give us a tour inside and out, so join us. Hey, Patrick. My name's Kevin Cal from Yardley, Pennsylvania. Thank you for having me on the channel. I'd like to give you a tour of my 1998 Freightliner MT45 step van. Purchased this vehicle back in the beginning of 2022 but it's been a vision of my wife and myself for probably about three years now. Come on in. The whole basis behind this build was really to, to be stealthy and build it like a construction vehicle. Um, so as you can see, I have plenty of safety vests. I have my orange jacket, gloves, flashlight. So basically I could park this vehicle anywhere and kind of blend in as a construction vehicle. And then as you come in, you're gonna notice it's not a safety, it's not a construction vehicle when you come in. So come on in. Um, first and foremost, this is like our parlor. It was built not only to, uh, to have some creature comforts at home, we inherited some cabinets from, from some neighbors in my area, as well as a break front, which stores some of our beach equipment and, and our laundry equipment, as well as our personal hygiene. Also installed a two seat um, out of a New Jersey transit bus. And the reason for that was we wanted to have some seat belts. So if my daughter's riding with us, she could fasten her seat belt and ride comfortably. This is bolted to the frame and bolted to the bulkhead. Um, as well as we do primarily watch um, our iPads in lieu of TV, the television. So we could set our iPads up on the counter, kind of hang out right here. Just to go over some of the creature comforts at home. When, the, when we purchased this vehicle, this vehicle was purchased from a bread company in central Pennsylvania. So what you see here did not exist. This was a stripped step van. Um, it was built from scratch, but one good thing about step vans is it, it's the awesome platform to build off of because it's, everything is perfectly square. You're gonna see that it's all tongue and groove ceiling. Above the ceiling is spray foam insulation. My walls have two inch insulation with quarter inch birch plywood. My floor has inch and a half foam insulation three quarter inch plywood with just some, this is some press and stick carpet. For privacy, I have a curtain here that we can close, as well as I have the bulkhead door. That shut, shuts us out from the elements at nighttime. So like I said, that whole stealthness with the construction vehicle, perfect segue to that. So as you come in, one of the big things is we needed private facilities. So Camco, cartridge, cassette, toilet, as well as I have a 32 by 32 shower. That 32 by 32 shower is fed from a 30 gallon fresh water tank, dumps into a 25 gallon gray water tank, which is mounted on the frame rail. This was built, bought as a kit from a big box store, um, except for the controls and the shower head that was purchased um, from an RV dealer. Vents in the ceiling are just 14 by 14 fans. I have one um, that uses exhaust for the bathroom, as well as I have one above the bed that I can use as either exhaust or as an in, as a intake. All these walls were built with insulation in them. All my plumbing is behind these walls. Um, so, and I used all PEX fittings and PEX tubing. On this wall, I have the controls for my water pump, my water heater, and the LED lighting. This is a control for the water heater. This is an outside thermostat. I have the Fugati, um, 12 volt propane water heater, instantaneous water heater, which is mounted underneath this, the cabinets. As you can see, underneath the cabinet, I have my 30 gallon fresh water tank, and I also have a catch can, five gallon catch can for my sink. I did not want the sink water to mix in with the shower water, because as long as we use biodegradable soap in the shower, I could really dispose of that anywhere. Um, but with the sink, I wanted to make sure that we dispose of it properly and that would go into uh, my sanitary sewer. I have inch and a, inch and a half um, birch countertop, 15 by 15 sink, 1000 watt microwave. It also houses my toaster oven. Big box store purchase, plenty of cabinet space for, for our everyday living. Coffee pot. 110 volt outlet for the microwave, 
110 fold outlet for coffee pots with the USB port. Uh, two burner, 5,000, 15,000 um, propane stove. Propane tank is a 20 gallon horizontal tank that's located outside. Also wanted to show you another neat feature. These burners generate a lot of heat and in a small confined space. So for just for for safety, for safety and for also to keep neatness on the countertop, I just purchased this off Amazon. It's just a $25 splash guard, but what it does is it keeps the heat off the back wall um, and and keeps you away from any issues that you may have with heat transfer and may cause a fire in the wall. So underneath the cabinet, still room for storage, part of my water tank. It's tough to utilize the space that um, exists where the wheel well was. So I mounted my fresh water tank on top of the wheel well. All my, ca all my cabinet doors are magnetic. This is actually my daughter's bed. It's a little bigger than a twin, a little shorter than a twin, but it works well for us. It's a uh, Tempur-Pedic mattress built on a frame, bolted to the wall. Underneath that Tempur-Pedic mattress, I have a 12 volt chest style refrigerator, freezer as well as I bought some um, storage bins from, from Target that we, ho we house our um, pots and pans and our, and our dishware with some just some child locks. More cabinet space for clothing throughout. Here's our queen size bed. Queen size bed, another big box purchase on sale. Built a frame for that. Um, and that, the reason why it is so high is because I wanted to have ample garage space, which, we'll, which I'll go into in a second, for us to store our, our everyday gear, our bikes and our wetsuits and whatever else we want. Also, we also travel not only with my daughter and my wife, we have three dogs that we travel with. So the one thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that we can safely secure the dogs if we go out, as well as for a, a comfortable place for them to sleep when we do go out and they're not running around and they're not sleeping in a bed with us. So if you look over here, this is where I house my switches for my 12 volt lighting. Underneath in the garage, I also have a light as well as USB port. I have Renergy 600 watts of solar on my roof as well as a 300 amp hour battery, lithium ion amp hour battery located in the garage area. 2000 watt inverter, which runs my 110 volt appliances and microwave, my outlets, and then whatever else we need to run. In, a, in the summertime, I have a portable air conditioner that the, the inverter will run and I can go pretty much the whole night. That 300 watt amp hour battery I currently have after the New Year's, hopefully for as a nice Christmas present, um, I'll receive another 300 amp hour battery. It'll give me 600 amp hours and we can go a little bit longer. For heat, we purchased a Chinese diesel heater. There's a story behind this. Uh, probably about three months ago, I purchased a Chinese diesel heater from Amazon, took it out of the box. So excited, great reviews. Everybody raved about these Chinese diesel heaters. Cut a hole in my floor, run the exhaust outside, run the intake outside, wire the thing up and it doesn't work. Diagnose it, realize that the fuel pump is bad. Order a new fuel pump, very inexpensive to, to get replacement parts. Order a new fuel pump, fire the unit up. Fuel pump works, Chinese diesel heater doesn't work. One bad thing about some of the vendors that you use online for these diesel heaters, there's little or no customer service. So in this, in my case, there was little or no, there was no customer service. Needless to say, I provided some negative feedback and I threw the garbage, I threw the, the diesel heater out in the garbage. Um, I had just chalk it up to experience. My backup plan was I went with the little buddy heater that we, we used a couple of times. The only drawback to the little buddy heater is it's not the CO issue because I have my CO detectors in, in, in the vehicle. It, they generate a lot of moisture. It's a good, good source of heat, but I need something a little bit better. So what we also did as a backup was I bought a 1200 watt electric heater that I would store underneath the garage area that would heat this space up pretty decent, but huge electric draw. So after numerous reviews I've read about Chinese diesel heaters, I'm gonna try this circus one more time. I want to purchase another Chinese diesel heater, but an all-inclusive, which I'll show you. And I, and I said to myself, before I even install this, I'm going to run it on the ground, make sure it works. 
Did that, filled it up with diesel, hooked it up to 12 volts, thing ran like a top, shut it off, tried it again, continued to spin like a top, and I, I installed it. Um, best $125 I've ever spent on heat. It's underneath in the garage area, which I'll show you right now. So as you can see, I have low bridge underneath. I have my LED lighting in the ceiling, as well as I have my all-inclusive diesel heater, which actually works very well. Holds about three quarters of a gallon of diesel fuel, which under high load or on high heat could probably go about eight hours. For, so for what I use it for on low, as well as I didn't talk about my electric blanket, I could probably go, I can go an entire night um, with this set at about 60, 65 degrees, an electric blanket is comfortable in here. Um, part of the garage houses all my electrical. So you see my 2000 watt inverter, 300 amp hour battery, as well as all the solar panel wiring. I have a 10 amp um, trickle charger that I could plug to shore power if I absolutely needed to recharge my, my battery. Um, I also have a backup generator that I had at my house already that really is just out here for storage but in the event that I absolutely needed I have a 2000 watt generator as well as I inherited a tool chest so everything that I need is here this port right here is for uh, exhaust port for my air conditioning that I use in the summertime as I said I'll remove this and then I have a portable air conditioner that just plugs into my inverter the exhaust vents right to the outside brings me fresh cold air on the inside. So, um, also I have some storage in here. I have a, here's my 1200 watt um, heater that I, I use time to time, as well as I just carry some equipment that I might need, motor oil or power steering fluid or whatnot. So if you look at the back wall, you can see some of the spray foam, spray, spray foam insulation that I had used on the ceiling um, and also cascaded down the back wall as well, because I had some left over. And it's about an inch, inch and a half thick on both walls as well as on the ceiling. This insulation is just foam insulation that I used on either the floors or the walls. And really I doubled it up. So it's three quarter. So I doubled the three quarter up for the floor. So the floor exists of uh, inch and a half insulation on the floor with three quarter inch plywood. And then in my walls, like I said, I used two inch and then two inch foam insulation as well as um, the quarter inch birch plywood which is painted over. This old barn wood was this another find that was on closed out in a big box store that I just took a roller and painted over a couple sections to make it look a little interesting but it was cheap fast. That's on top of the quarter inch plywood that's there. I probably added about in total about an additional 2,000 pounds but one nice thing about the step fan is the step fan is rated for 16,000 pounds empty it's about 10,000 pounds so I had the room to uh, to really build off of that so and then lastly I have it my fan in the back that I use for air circulation and then my second source of egress so now let's take a walk on the outside and I'll show you some of the some of the things that improvements what we've made to make it stealthy and look like a construction vehicle. So if we come to the front of the vehicle, installed all new tires. Um, like I said, I wanted it to look like a construction vehicle. So I added the cones, the cone rack to the front on a new, on a new, on a new bumper. Um, this was a, a bread truck. So I kept the name of the original owner, which was Terranetti's bread in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I kept their name on the front. That's just the left, the remains of the glue. Everything on the truck was painted over with Rust-Oleum paint, and you can't notice it, but it was painted with either a roller or a paintbrush. The exact same color. Changed out the headlights to LED headlights because anybody that knows the old style headlights, you're lucky you could see five feet in front of you. So new headlights, I could look down the road quite a ways. New front tires. New rear tires, um, added some emblems. This is a battery charger. This is the shore power for a battery charger for the truck batteries. I was very specific in the, the engine and the transmission that I wanted in this vehicle. And I looked for probably about a good year until I found what I wanted. I wanted the 5.9 Cummins engine with the Allison transmission 
and some sometimes you could find them and sometimes you can't they're one the nice thing about them is you can go a half million miles plus um, on the engine before it needs a rebuild um, but the long and short of it was this is what I wanted I didn't want anything else I didn't want to settle so I wanted to make sure I got it right the jump seats I installed so my wife can sit here I so I replaced this was this was a new installation as well as the replacement seat in the front um, Grace Industries was really I wanted to show where we were from I wanted to show that we were from Yardley Pennsylvania what was I going to name the truck one of the three dogs got her name drawn out of the hat and it was Grace so we just said it's Grace Industries it gives to that whole stealth appearance when we're out on the road Somebody looked at the truck, they're like, oh, it's just a construction vehicle. So, as we come down, the Fugatti water heater, instantaneous water heater, it was installed. I cut that in myself and installed it. Propane water heater. Here's my fresh water fill with a lockable cap. As I had mentioned before, installed a 20 gallon horizontal propane tank. I wanted to be above board, I wanted safety safety in mind i did not want propane tanks mounted on the inside of the vehicle not that there's anything wrong with that but i wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing with the installation as you come around the back install the trailer hitch for our bike racks as well as a backup camera so i could see what i'm doing when i'm backing up um, the vice was something i had laying around the house but adds to the stealthiness allows people not to scratch their head what this vehicle is. Here's the air conditioned vent that I talked about. It comes with a six inch exhaust port that that exhaust from the air conditioned vents to the outside. Um, and then let me show you the inside. Here's my garage build. Toolbox, amp hour battery, my generator, um, the dog gate, as well as I have a Coleman portable stove and portable grill that's on the underside. On the top, you can't really see it from here, but we'll walk around the side. I, I inherited a 40 foot extension ladder. What I did was I separated the two flies. When it came time to mount the solar panels, I was kind of a little bit at wit's end because I wanted to make them look seamless. I installed a roof rack that I just bought from a big box store with, and made it with Unistrut and, and flat stock metal but they were spread out about 48 inches apart. So in order for me to install the 42 inch long solar panels, I utilized the extension ladder. So I bolted the extension ladders to the Unistrut and then bolted the solar panels to the extension ladders. And then if you look from the side, it still gives a stealthiness of a construction vehicle. The solar panels blend right in. And there's my six, 300 watts of solar on each side. Another hookup for shore power. Here's my exhaust for my famous Chinese diesel heater. And here's my diesel fuel tank. 40, 40 gallon diesel fuel tank. That's just for the engine. I don't use that for the diesel heater. So any, any hole or any ins external insulation that I did, I used to use butyline tape to close those gaps, or I used lap sealing. So I have the two fans in the ceiling, as well as the skylights in the ceiling. And I also have the wire entry port in the ceiling. I used lap sealant to close those gaps so the water will be impenetrable. And it's a re it's really good sealant. And as well as when I did install the roof racks, I used the butyline tape. Butyline tape st stops the water from penetrating into the openings that we had made. Patrick, thank you for having me on the channel today. I was very excited to show your viewers my creation of my step van. This is the first step van that I've had on the channel. So as you know, I was super excited to meet with you today. So just to review some of the specs here, this is a 26 foot long van and the back space is approximately 19, 18, 19 feet. Correct. So it's quite a decent sized living space and you were able to incorporate a toilet, a shower, two beds, a full kitchen mm -hmm. and a living room space in the front of that. I really like your approach to this. Thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about budget? Like sure. what, what did you start off with and what did you end with? Sure. Um, so like Patrick said, it's about 26 feet. I have just under 200 square feet of living space. Um, set a budget of approximately 10,000 when I was going to do this build. 
Um, and that was pre-COVID. We had this number in our head. We knew what we wanted to pay for a truck. I didn't want to pay any more than 10,000 for a truck and I didn't want to pay any more than 10,000 to build it out. And then with everything after COVID just exploded with prices. So my budget went from 10 to 15. Um, with that said, um, I'm somewhere in between those two. There's some things that I absolutely wanted to install new. And there was some things that I could have gotten from the secondhand shop and I did. Um, so that was really uh, keeping me aligned with my budget. Uh, Is there any tips that you would share with our viewers if they were to take on a project like this, like registration, insurance, anything they need to know about? Question your insurance before you make your purchase because most insurance companies will not insure a truck. Um, even though it's not a commercial vehicle, they'll insure an RV, They'll insure a, you know, a, a pickup truck or a van, but when it comes to step van, you gotta have to kind of look around. Um, and there's some companies out there that you hear about every day on the radio that'll cover those, those insurance costs. Um, Registration-wise, it's registered as a, as, a, as a truck. It's not a commercial vehicle. Um, I didn't need commercial plates. I don't have RV plates. I could convert it to an RV and get RV plates and then get insurance from the same insurance company I have my uh, car insurance with. But that said, um, this was relatively easy and simple to get that. It's not like buying a school bus and having to no. go convert it to an RV and registering it different. That's a good tip though that you shared with our viewers. One other thing, we're probably gonna get a lot of questions is, do you need a CDL? No, you do not need a CDL because this is under the 19,000 pound threshold. It has hydraulic brakes. Um, you do not need a, a CDL to drive this vehicle and it's actually pr very easy to drive. It's kind of like driving a, a vehicle with barn doors wide open. It's kind of sways on the highway, but it's really not, once you get used to driving the vehicle, it's not, it's, it's actually, it's a pleasure to drive it. And a tip that you gave me earlier off camera was getting the tire pressure right. Correct. Really Correct. improves the ride. Just because it's a truck, you don't inflate the tire pressure to its maximum. You follow the specifications of the vehicle. So once you get that down, it's actually pretty comfortable to drive. On a windy day like today, it's okay, but you know what, you, you make the best of it. Kevin, thanks again for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome creation. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.